when you have a system that has a dirty filter and a dirty condenser coil, it throws off your pressures quite a bit and it can lead to false readings. There's a million factors that play into it that you got to kind of help control a little bit. But yeah, definitely recommend getting this thing washed. I'm Ben with Yarbrough & Sons. Um, came out to this customer's house to fix their AC. They said the outdoor unit wasn't running. So I got here, I talked to her. She said it's blowing inside, but not outside. So I went out to the outdoor unit and just kind of checked a few things and found their capacitor to be dead. Um, I gave her five or six options on what we can do today to get it replaced and get it fixed up and up and running so we can get it house cooled down. Um, she decided to go with the turbo. A turbo 200 is a type of capacitor. It's kind of a, on the better end of capacitors. Um, they last way longer than a regular one. They also have a good warranty on them as well. And we just have seen a lot more improvement, especially when using these of not having to come back in five years to replace the capacitor out. So let's get started. What I do always tell customers though, is just because we're changing it out today does not mean it's going to be the only thing that's wrong with it. I always try to tell customers that, hey, if this failed, I can't check anything until we get it replaced because I don't want to tell them this is the only thing wrong and then something else fail on them. We want to make sure we catch everything if we can. But what I'm actually going to do is this spade right here is not doing too hot. Can't get it to stay on things. So I'm actually going to replace this. So this spade right here, whenever I try to push it on, it just slides on and off. That's a risk of not making good contact, and it can cause actually electrical issues with that. It can also start to cause this wire to get hot and burn up. It can cause this metal to kind of get hot and burn up. So we want to make sure that all these spade connections are tight like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this spade just kind of while I'm here. And that way, we have no issues. A lot of people crimp their stuff a little bit differently. I prefer this right here just because it has a, it's a fine crimp, so I know it's going to be tight on there. And I'll even crimp it a few times just to make sure, just so I know that wire is not going to come loose. So we're good. Now I can reattach it back onto there. There we go. So this. This thing is wired up and ready to go. Let me get a get this thing mounted real quick. Um, and that way I can screw it into this back plate. Since there's nothing, I don't have to worry about hitting a coil or anything like that. I can just get my screw here, create a hole, line it up like this. like that and that way we don't gotta worry about that moving you know anywhere really make sure our screw didn't hit anything we're good to go every wire is different colors you got a purple we got two oranges and you got a brown here um, and the way that I can kind of tell first off which wire goes where is one the old capacitor that was in here I took a photo of it with my phone then I saw where those went on that terminal so and these regular capacitors like this all have, it's kind of hard to read because they painted over it, but they have a C for center, fan, and Herm, hermetic compressor. Um, and so that tells me that that wire is coming from the compressor, coming from the fan, and that's just a center common wire. Um, so I also, in my very chicken scratch handwriting, wrote it down here just so I wouldn't forget. Plus I took two, three photos in multiple different ways just so I wouldn't get them confused. They usually always have a wiring diagram with colors. So we find our capacitor right here. And we know that brown from our condenser fan motor is going to fan. C for center is our orange wire. Goes out that way. The other orange wire comes from, or I guess it'd be a red orange wire comes from our condenser fan motor again. And then our purple wire from our compressor for our start winding goes there. So, and then I'll look at this to make sure the colors match up to the terminals. And I'll look at my new capacitor I put in a turbo. And I gotta make sure that purple is going to 45. That's what it takes. Our orange is our center. And they're going right there in the middle, right there. And 
brown is going to our five microfarad spot right here for the van. Capacitors, no problem. Sometimes it's all about the location of the unit, how easy it is to service, but most of the time it's just to unscrew it, unmount it, unwire, and then put the new one back in. So, but we got it all wired up. Um, I'm gonna fire up real quick. And then while it's starting up again and getting that refrigerant flowing, hopefully I'll throw some gauges on there. And that way we can check the pressure, make sure the pressure is good, make sure it's cooling like it should, and make sure that before we leave here today that everything's running. Because we don't want to replace one thing and then leave and something else break. So let me get her plugged in real quick. Moment of truth. Okay, and you kind of could hear that compressor. It sounds a little rough, um, very loud, noisy. What I'm gonna do is take our wire from our compressor. I'm gonna amp her out, and I'm gonna read the nameplate to see. So we're pulling 12.8, 12.844, and so we're gonna go to here, and our compressor, our run load amps is 16.7. So that tells us that it's actually running low amps compared to its normal. Um, that can mean a multitude of things. It could be the fact that it hasn't been running at all. It could also mean that the compressor's starting to go out a little bit. It's starting to not be able to pull as much power. Um, I did find the, the capacitor dead, so that could mean that it was not pulling enough or pulling too much. It kind of just it can mean a multitude of things. That just means that that compressor is not healthy. I'd rather see low amperage than high amperage, though. So 10.7, 16.7 is what we want to see. So it's running a little bit low. I'll even check the fan out, too. Common from our fan. Point three eight fan or one point eight. So we're reading point eight two, and right here we want point eight. So that means our cancer fan zoomed what it should. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is our compressor amps was a little low. I'm gonna check our pressures to see how it's pumping. So we get lucky enough that our company provides us with these probes. Um, they're really helpful in diagnosing and also limiting how much refrigerant escapes that system. Because when you use regular, regular hoses and manifold gauges, you end up losing a lot of refrigerant whenever you pull those gauges off. Because you got about you know three foot hoses worth of refrigerant that's leaving your system every time. So I got uh, Phil Priest probes. I'm gonna hook one up to both of the lines, and that way I'll be able to read pressure on my phone. Called Bluetooth. So I'm gonna hook this up real quick. There we go. There's our suction line hooked up. We had almost no spray there, which is surprising. That's usually the one that's gonna spray at you the most. So, okay. Get my these are temperature clamps. Let's me read the line of that temperature of that line. So you want to make sure when you're putting these on, not to put them on any welds or bins, because your temperature will be slightly different. You want a accurate, very accurate temperature reading. So sometimes you got to kind of there's any material or any kind of sometimes they paint these but it's in the way sometimes you got to wiggle those to kind of get down to that copper so first thing we want to make sure we get our refrigerant correct so it's a 410a system get that in there like that you can usually tell quite a bit by how hot the air is coming out that tells it that's the air being pulled through these coils and also being pulled across those uh, components inside there you want it to be pulling heat from the house but you also want it to not be blazing hot, that means that we're not getting good airflow or they're not pulling, it's pulling too much heat or vice versa. Now I'm inspecting this coil. I wanna make sure to see that these, this coil is not gonna be um, obstructive anyway. So 
here in Oklahoma, we get really bad cottonwood issues. That's one of our biggest things is the, these things pulling air through these coils. It sucks up that cottonwood and it kind of creates a filter or a blanket almost. It's real thick, can't allow any airflow. So one of our biggest things we like to do is look for that and let customers know that, hey, you know, you need to either get it maintenance or go either yourself and get it with a hose and rinse it off lightly. It's looking pretty dirty and caked up with cottonwood. So I'll let the homeowner know and it's pretty prevalent and with our temperatures as well. Our coil temp right now, the refrigerant in the coil is roughly around 130 degrees. You want that, it's not quite where we want it. We want it a little bit lower than that. Um, it's not that hot outside today, luckily. Um, so one thing I will do is get my other phone and check my temperature outside right now. So it says it's 93. So 130 is way too high on that. So now I'm checking to make sure our pressures line up with what this chart says. Every comp every brand has their own chart and every every different system is going to have its own chart. So we want to kind of look at where we need to be at. So we're looking at our vapor pressure, which is this number right here, 147. Oops. And then we want to see our outdoor air temperature, ambient temp. It's about 90 to 95. So we take that number here and this number here, 146, 145. So we want our pressure to be about 379 to 400. See here at 476. And judging by this coil, I'm gonna say that it definitely needs to be washed and reevaluated. Um, just because I don't want to say it's not low on charge, because it very well could be. But when you have a system that has a dirty filter and a dirty condenser coil it throws off your pressures quite a bit and it can lead to false readings, misinformation, just kind of, we want to make sure we have everything perfect as, or as perfect as we can get it because we're never going to get it perfect, but we want to make sure to try to get it as close to perfect as we can under the ideal conditions to check the refrigerant. So it's a very delicate process and it involves, there's a million factors that play into it that you got to kind of help control a little bit. So, but yeah. Definitely recommend getting this thing washed. So I changed that filter out and I waited for that system to kick back on just so we can see how pressures are. Still a dirty condenser, but a little bit better circumstances with the clean filter because that old one had would not allow any airflow past it. Um, so one thing I'm doing is wait, checking my pressures, letting the system run for about 10 to 15 minutes before I make a diagnosis fully. Um, and I also got my temp probe here, and that way we can see how hot that air is coming into the coil and how hot that, based on how hot that refrigerant is. So um, it's shown to be about 95 degrees and dropping. So, but our coil temp is 120. So that tells us that that coil is just not getting a whole lot of air through there. So um, I let, let her know to clean it and it'll probably run a lot better. Um, they didn't want us to do it today, so they're gonna do it. So once they get that done, it should be rocking and rolling. Alrighty, so we're done. I noticed I checked the pressures out. They look great. Um, once I get that thing washed, it'll look even better. Um, so other than that, just gotta take our gauges off and wrapped up and talk to the customer. So um, today it was roughly just shy of 500 for a turbo and for us to get out here today. Um, I did give them a few options on maintenance and that would give them some discounts, but they decided to go against that today. And I also gave them some, a few options on just discounts in general we could offer, but um, they decided to go just with the turbo and and that's all right. We'll make sure to let them know that they can always call and we'll come out and check it out if they don't think it's cooling effectively after the day. But it looks like it should be cooling quite a bit. Even inside, moving cold air makes it feel a lot better than no cold air at all. So we're all done today at this job. Um, I'll get my tools picked up and I'm gonna go talk to her again, just kind of handle everything afterwards, but uh, we've got good for today. Wrap it up and go on to the next one.